Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Better Artist Workflows in Unity. I'm Mike Geig. And I am Hussein Cornell. On um, today, we are going to be talking about artist tools and artist workflows in Unity to really enable the things you're going to do. So, Hussein, what are the, what are the things you're going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to talk about uh, working uh, with uh, creating boxed out models or white boxes as they're called, then being able to take that uh, white box from Unity into your digital content creation tool uh, with our FBX exporter and uh, do that round tripping. Uh, once uh, you've uh, you know embellished those models, etc., without breaking any of the processes that somebody else uh, that is programming or adding scripts and sound to that original model uh, won't have to deal with it. So it just comes right in uh, with all the updates. And then I'm going to finally talk a little bit about Shader Graph and some of the cool things that, that you can do without coding, uh, especially someone coming from an artist background that's used to a node-based. Uh, uh, materials and um, shader editor. Fantastic. After that, uh, I'm going to show you how to create an intentional or intention based camera system using Cinemachine. Uh, we're going to look at, you know, modifying the look and feel of our projects using post processing. And finally, we're going to look at using timeline to create some pretty cool in game effects that aren't just cinematics that are actually, you know, in game mechanics. So with all that said, and there's no sense in hanging out here in PowerPoint too long, why don't, uh, why don't we just get right into it? And uh, Hussein, why don't you kick us off here? Awesome, let's do it then. Well, here I go. So uh, as you guys can see, we have this super awesome project uh, called Boat Attack, which uh, is available on our GitHub. So I was looking at the game and I was like, yeah, this game is okay, but man, just imagine if we have some water cannons and we can just, you know, blast some things or whatever. It just you know, I like, you know, cannons and I like exploding things and shooting things, so why not? So the first tool I want to show off is a uh, tool that's very good at um, prototyping, and that is this tool, uh, Pro Builder. So what this is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to polygon model within Unity, and I'll have all the options I'm used to in Maya or 3ds Max, Blender, etc. within the editor. So if you don't have this menu uh, item here, Pro Builder, it's because you haven't actually loaded the package. So we have uh, a package manager in Unity where we store all these extra plugins with all this extra functionality that when you need it, you just go ahead and you install it. And uh, for this talk, we're going to be relying on the FBX exporter. We are going to be relying on Pro Builder, which is what we're using currently timeline and Cinemachine uh, to mention a few. So back into our scene view. I'm gonna come over here to tools, Pro Builder, and we're gonna open the window. And right off the bat, I'm just going to create a shape. So it starts out with a cube. You could actually go to the little uh, plus icon here and you can select a variety of different objects to start out with. I'm just gonna start out with a cube because I have already researched and done a ton of, uh, of um, you know, uh, searching for my perfect reference image. And as you can see, I am going to make a water cannon of such. And uh, hopefully I have the same enthusiasm as this young whippersnapper. That's amazing. There. Yeah, look, look at his head. I think, that's, I think that's photoshopped on. I don't know, man. I think this is uh, straight up the advertising, uh, you know, Google or Amazon, wherever the heck I found that uh, had. But, Fair enough. Uh, we shall see. Maybe we can send them a letter or something asking for verification on child's head. So what is different between this kind of object and just a normal game object cube? So the difference is that I have the ability to edit in component mode and I have the ability to do all these other operations. The other thing that you're noticing as I'm clicking the different component modes from face to edge to vertice is that I am getting a context sensitive menu that allows me to do operations that only work on that type of component. So for example, I select a couple edges and I wanna create a split edge loop. I can go here, insert edge loop, split edge loop is what it's called in Maya. So that's just to give it context. And there you go, I have added a edge. 
I can come over here and say, you know what, I want to be able to extrude this face. And extrude face, no problem. Super, super easy. And uh, I'm just going to do a quick white box uh, uh, mock-up. I don't have to get super perfect. And the reason for this is that I can then push this to uh, Maya or 3ds Max using our FBX toolkit. So without any further ado, I'm not going to go too crazy on this because I actually went ahead and actually created a boat. I'll get to these guns uh, maybe later at some point. So I'm going to hide these bad boys, maybe work on them later. And here is a boat prototype that I was working on. And while I was working on it, uh, I said, okay, I'll make this and I'll send this off with our FBX exporter. And one thing I'll show you is that this has already been uh, worked on by one of our developers. So Mike went ahead and said, you know what, Hussein, thank you for making the, uh, the white box for me, putting it in the position we want, we're, we're testing things out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start you know, connecting all of these things. So this is those were my exact words. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to stop. I'm, I'm ruining your flow. Keep going. No, Sorry. no worries. It's all good. So, so basically, this is uh, this is why I like this tool. So again, we are going to go to our uh, package manager and make sure the FBX exporter is installed. And there it is. And what it allows us to do now is that when I select this boat and all of its dependencies. I can go here and say convert to FBX, linked prefab. And why would I want a linked prefab? And that is because the linked prefab is going to allow it to go back and forth between the digital content creation tool without me having to re-import, reconnect. So the artist doesn't have to worry about all the intricacies of what that developer has already done. But there is a step that you have to do within um, when you first load this up, so we're going to come to our um, project settings and we're going to go to the FBX export uh, tab. And the reason for this is if you have not installed the integration plugin, so Unity very easily is going to send this off to Maya, but this is for Maya or 3ds Max or whatever to understand how to get this back in a live link so you don't have to be inputting things by hand. So you would click here, install the Unity integration, and you're going to put it where you have your plugin folder. I know many of you work with, uh, you know, custom install locations, etc. So it will allow you to put it wherever you want. All right, you know, said so with that, I have already installed it. This is what it looks like in Maya. So this is a completely empty scene. Once you have installed that, you get this awesome new Unity tab. And here you can do an import, an export, only modifications to models or only modifications to animation or the whole thing. So let's do it. So I'm going to select my boat again and everything that's uh, part of it. I'm going to right click over it, convert to FBX link prefab. It's going to ask me where do I want, where do I want to put this and uh, Right here, I've selected, I want to put it in my models folder because this is a model and we're going to name it Boat Prototype FBX. So I'm just going to say convert. It's going to say if I want to keep namespaces and that is something if you're using Maya, I would say go ahead and use it. So that is sending that off. And at this moment, I think it takes a little bit of time to make sure all of these connections are perfect. Mm-hmm. And let me see if it's ready. Oh, not yet. There we go. So there we now go. it's ready. And you'll notice that in my project underneath, uh, under, underneath my models, I now have, so one is the FBX and the other one is the link prefab. So it's already made it into a, a prefab. And now we go to Maya. So here I go. Make sure you have your project set properly. And we're going to go to Unity. You're going to go Import, Model, and here is my boat prototype FBX. I'm going to open it up, and you'll notice, like, oh my god, where is it? Well, the reason being is that Maya uses inches, and Unity uses meters. This is the correct size, so you don't have to worry about that. And check this out. In Maya, I have my full hierarchy retained. Everything is perfect. 
I can come over here and I can start doing some uh, modeling in Maya if I want to. I'm just going to use something very simple to illustrate how this would work. So here we go. I am going to, I don't even have to save it. I just say export model only. I come back to Unity and bam, look at that. We have wing, super awesome. Everything is connected. Nothing is, is uh, broken, so that is super cool. But what if, uh, for some odd reason, um, I had someone on my team or me, myself, we said, hey, you know what? Uh, while he was doing all those connections, we actually went ahead and modeled something. And we just wanna replace it without breaking anything. Sure, let's do it. So I'm going to import, and uh, I think I have, um, where in the world did we end up putting those? It's under complete, I believe. You're looking for the boat model? Yeah, it's under There's complete. There's like an underscore complete folder. Here it is, it's new boat 3 FBX. So I'm just gonna import that. This is just to save time, right? Because you could model all that. Yes, I could have but... actually done that to this boat in uh, in here, and it would have taken all those changes as you saw the change that I did here. This is just to illustrate that I can actually swap things if I wanted to, um, if you're working with a huge, large team. But yes, you could modify this one to be just like that. No worries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this new boat is part of this... Uh, of this group right here, of this export uh, group set. So I'm going to make sure it's in the same uh, hierarchy. Oops, sorry. And I'm gonna drop it, it's underneath this hole. So they now exist in the same uh, place. I'm actually going to uh, delete that one. I don't need it. And the other thing that I did is that I copied its name just so we can have the, the same name as before. And then the other step that you have to do is you have to make sure you drop it down here and make sure it's part of that export set. Because if not, it won't actually send it. If you are replacing. If you're not replacing, it won't have done anything. So now we're going to come over here, very simply, export model only, and go back to Unity. Bam, we're done. And Look at that. Yeah, this is sweet. And now we're gonna go into showing you a little bit about some of the materials and textures. Right now I have a base material. This is just the standard lit material uh, where you have your normal connections. I can't do much more than what it is, right? I can change the smoothness and the metallic. I can make it all, you know, I can, I can, whoa, I can totally chrome it out. But that is about it. I can't do much more than that. One of the things that we were thinking about in this game is that we wanted to go super ninja skills and maybe, you know, make this boat so it can have a cloaking device. And um, so how can we do that? Well, let's jump into Shader Graph. So Shader Graph uh, comes as standard when you use HDRP and URP. So if you're using the universal render pipeline or high definition render pipeline, Shader Graph is part of that. So you don't have to install anything. So without any further ado, how you make one, you would go to create, then you would go to uh, shader and you would pick the type that you want. Right now, we're just gonna use a normal PBR graph and I'll explain to you what that is. So while it's thinking, I'm gonna double click here to get into our Shader Graph window. So the PBR master is our output node, and this is what we are actually going to see in this uh, preview here. It has nothing, so it's just basically blank. I'm not going to spend much time on here. I'm gonna show you the custom one that we made. So we made a custom one for this boat with very simple nodes. We're gonna connect them together. So there we go. It looks pretty much the same. You're like, well, why would you use that? Well, let's go inside the editor. So we have recreated with that master node. Here, let me get my mouse to zoom in because the tablet won't do it for me. So same PBR node and it looks the same. We've connected uh, our materials and made sure that everything's connected properly to work. So with URP and HDRP, we're using a mask material which has our metallic smoothness, occlusion, etc. Uh, amped occlusion. Uh, we have our base map and we have our normal. Okay, that's normal. You know, if you're just going to do that, there's really no point in actually creating a shader graph. But if we wanted to add some of that coolness. So what I did is that I created this uh, 
this little property here called ninja skills. But I'm going to delete it because who wants to see something that's already been done? Let's start from scratch. And I'm going to actually delete it from here. So how did I get that and how did I get these properties? So this is the Blackboard. Sorry for the uh, hard edit there, everybody. We, uh, we had a child interference on the play, uh, the pleasures of working from home. So uh, let's get back to it. All right, awesome. Sorry about that, guys. So as I was saying, we have uh, this Blackboard area here, and I didn't really explain the functionality of that, but you can turn it on and off here. This allows us to add our own custom properties based on some of these options. So we can have vector ones through fours, color, textures, cube maps, and a lot of other things. I'm not gonna go into every single one. So for my ninja skills or my transparency uh, uh, trick, I wanna use a vector one because I wanna have an option to go from uh, one to a zero. And uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, make it a slider. And I'm gonna put a max here of, uh, I wonder if I can run a two here. You can just do a 1.1 or yeah, two. Anything, yeah. anything above one will work. Yep. So I'm gonna put it to just to, just to be on the safe side. And then I'm going to, oh yeah, I have to rename it. I gotta put ninja skills back on there. Yeah, vector one is boring. I know. Skills with a Z. <laughs> it looks like I spelled ninja kills. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it works. <laughs> well, I mean, ninjas, that's what they do, right? They kill. All right, so we're gonna put this into our alpha clipping threshold which is it will basically hide whatever the camera is looking at it. It's going to say anything above one is not going to be rendered and anything under one will be. So let's test it. Don't forget to save. Let's go back to our scene and I'll make sure that I have my correct shader on it. Yes, I do. And you noticed I now, whoa, get back over here. I now have this ninja skills um, with, with my uh, Z on there. Oh. Oh, this is... You dragged the wrong one on there. I did drag the wrong one. Or you one. got the wrong shader selected. That's the complete one. Oh, You're this skipping is... Ahead. I am skipping ahead. Ooh, bad, bad me. No worries. Actually, that's a good thing. So you can see that I can select my custom shader graphs, and this is my incomplete one. And it just so You guys updates. got a little sneak peek there. Yes. Sorry about that. So back here, we've got the ninja kills, and that's good because you can see that they're named differently. So now we go here, and anything over one, boom! But you notice that's a pretty harsh uh, on and off switch. So we want to make it uh, be a little bit smoother. And again, it didn't really take me that much. I have one node. That's it. So I want to come back over here and actually do a simple noise. But I'm going to delete that because you're like, how did he get that? You can right click and create node. Or you can press the space bar and create that. You can start typing or you can go through painstakingly and look at everything that is there. I have a simple noise so I'm going to start typing simple and that's the option I get. And then I'm going to, I don't know, let's say 100, whatever. Uh, I'm going to give it, then you can play around with that as well. So it's a little bit more uh, uh, bigger, more bigger. Look at my English here. Less noisy, more noisy. I don't know what that is. Yeah, larger, larger noise pattern, I guess, is, is the proper way. So that sounds way better. I'm going to connect that to my alpha. That way there's going to be variance in that alpha. So things are going to turn on and off um, a little more varied, not just based on a one to, I mean, zero to 1.1 1 .1 on off switch. Okay, save it again. Let's go back and here we go. And that was the, you know, the completed one that you guys kind of saw. So now we've got this cool looking, I don't know, morph into nothingness, uh, dissolving into, into uh, space. So mm -hmm. let's see if this actually works. So I did my round tripping, brought everything in, and here I have it. So everything should be connected and work. So, you know, we're going to see how, how good Mike did his part. You, you sound so confident. Yeah, I guess that is my fault if it didn't, because I'm the one who was supposed to rig it all up. But we see the boat in the water. And uh, so now we want the camera to actually follow it. So why don't I pick up from here? Yeah, why don't you pick up from there? And uh, yeah, awesome. Okay, so here we are. And uh, I apologize, I do have a, a loud keyboard there. You're gonna hear me 
uh, type in as I, as I move around here. So we've got our boat, uh, we've got that effect. You'll notice uh, I actually have a different name in here. We're working off the same project, but but Hussein threw a, me a curveball and, and changed the name of his so uh, to be the one of the uh, the Pro Builder one. So anyway, it's the same thing uh, except uh, he renamed it there. And so what we saw is that yeah, when this when this boat goes. Um, you know, the camera doesn't go with it. And in my version, I already moved the boat over a little bit. I thought, oh, let's have it centered. And so one, I'm not a particularly good driver. Uh, and two, well, now I'm driving upside down and we want the boat or we want the camera to come with it. So how are we gonna do this? Well, you know, there are a few options. I We can certainly, um, you know, try to write some code, a camera control uh, script, but you know, I don't really wanna do that. I don't really know how to do that. Um, I could do something just silly. I could just take my main camera, just drop it, right on my boat as a child there and I could just hit play and this is gonna make everyone super motion sick. Um, so that's not maybe a particularly great option is that's not so good. Uh, so definitely don't wanna do that. Uh, yeah, it makes you a little bit sensitive there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something called Cinemachine to create an intention based camera system where I'm gonna tell it what I want it to do and it's gonna figure out how to do it. And so when I was installing Cinemachine, I just again came to this package manager and went to Cinemachine and installed that. And what that has given me is this menu at the top called Cinemachine. And I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna create something called a virtual camera. And in creating a virtual camera, a couple of things are gonna happen. One, I get this virtual camera game object with all these knobs and sliders and bells and whistles. The other thing is on my main camera, we got this new little icon here, which indicates that a Cinemachine brain has been uh, added as a component. That Cinemachine brain is this sort of intelligent control that allows all my virtual cameras and different Cinemachine things to take control of that camera and do cool things with it. And so I've got this camera, uh, this virtual camera now, and the virtual camera first off is giving me some warnings here because it says, hey, I'm, I'm not following anything. I'm not looking at anything. What's going on? And so I'm gonna tell that virtual camera, I'm gonna say, you know what, you're gonna follow this boat and I'm gonna switch over to my game view. You can see now my camera's moved over there. And I'm gonna say that you're also gonna look at the boat. There we go. And now we get these little crosshairs in here. And so now if my boat moves, my camera will move by virtue of this virtual camera. Now, that's great. I do know that I wanna increase my far clipping plane, right? Cause I, I know that uh, we have some stuff that's pretty far away. And I was noticing earlier there was some clipping and I wasn't sure why. Um, so we wanna increase that far clip plane on our camera. And I'm gonna say, all right, well, let's let's look at the body of the camera. Not what the camera's looking at, but where the camera is in 3D space. And I can see that it's right now like level with my boat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. That's way too much. I wanna go, you know, something maybe not so crazy, something like that's good. And I wanna just be a little bit closer to it. So we'll just come in right like maybe that. That's a little too high for my taste. So right about there. Okay, so that's again the body of the camera. And now I'm looking down here and I can have all these damping values, which are really great because they give our camera a sense of inertia, a sense of physicality, weight. Uh, these are things we're used to from watching movies and you know TV and, and experiencing games and these things is we want that, that realism there that we expect it. Uh, otherwise we kind of tend to get motion sick. And so that's good, but I also wanna add some damping to our yaw. There we go, just some yaw damping. That's gonna really make the camera feel hefty uh, when it's chasing this boat. Now I'm looking at the aim, and right now I'm looking directly at the center of the boat. And I can uh, I can click in and change this around a bit, uh, which not necessarily what I wanna do, and hopefully, okay, I just changed that screen position there. Let me just set that back, because I'm not, not 5.5, there we go. Uh, but what I wanna do is instead of just looking at the center, I'm also gonna look just slightly above the boat, like so. And I'm gonna look ahead of the boat a little bit. And that's just gonna make it feel a little faster where we're gonna be kind of looking at some spot above and in front of the boat. And that's what this camera's gonna be pivoting on. Now there are a lot of other things we can do like set up dead zones and maybe offset things. And again, have some bias and damping. We also have the ability to add noise uh, if you want to have like a, a shaky cam, we can add impulses, things like that. Uh, but you know, for now, I'm just gonna do that. Let's let's see what we ended up with. So I'm gonna hit play here, and uh, there we go. So not only do we have a camera system, but notice how the the camera drags behind the boat's turn a bit, 
and follows the boat, but it has some weight to it. It has inertia and damping. I'm still not a good driver, but at least now I've got my camera. And as I'm driving around, I'm noticing there's just a lot of really cool stuff in this scene. And one area that I really liked is this cave here. Um, now, in the actual Boat Attack game, you don't normally uh, get to come in this cave. Either the track takes you around there, um, so you don't really see much of this. But as I came in here, I thought, man, the cave is cool, but the lighting and stuff isn't, you know, isn't really what I would expect coming in here because it's it's the same post processing for the entire scene. And so let's talk a little bit about that post-processing. Uh, now, post-processing, depending on what render pipeline you're using, be it the high-definition render pipeline or the scriptable, or I'm sorry, the universal render pipeline or built-in, uh, you know, it has different ways that you can get it. Uh, but what I can see here is because I am using this uh, universal render pipeline, that ShaderGraph is just going to be, not ShaderGraph, sorry, uh, the post-processing stack is already going to be in here. I don't need to add anything special. And we're actually already using it. If I look at my island level, I can see this thing called a volume. And this volume has several post-processing effects on it already. And so I could see like right now we're already adding some post exposure to you can either darken it or lighten it and you can change your contrast. You can see, uh, you know, we can do like Instagram filter things here. I'm gonna undo all that. Uh, we can add a bunch of things. Um, so what I want to do is, and I said add a bunch of things, I didn't actually show you. I'm going to add a bunch of things we can do, like, uh, let's do maybe some chromatic aberrations, maybe. If we go to our game view, turn this on, and we should get some, there we go, some really cool edge banding and whatnot. I'm going to undo that because that's not supposed to be there, but whatever. So let's create something for our cave. Now, I'm going to come down here, and I have... In here, obviously, I have a whole bunch of stuff selected right now, so I'm seeing a bunch of things. But I have this cave collider. This cave collider is just a box collider that I've set up to just live in the mouth of this cave. Now, I'm going to use this to create a volume, and I don't have to do a box collider for this. I just happen to because I'm not actually an artist. Uh, and so I was like, boxes. Boxes are easy. But I could do, you know, spheres, cylinders, custom meshes, any shape that I want. Uh, but I was just going simple with it, and I did box collider. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a volume uh, component here, uh, just like we had seen. And this one is going to be, uh, for now, global. Uh, and I am going to say that this is going to have a priority of 1, which is going to be a higher priority than my, my actual global profile, which is setting up all my lights. So this one will override that one. And I'm going to create a new profile. And now what I need to do is just specify what do I want to be different. And so I'm going to click Add Override post-processing. And the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to do some color adjustments. So immediately when I override this, my scene actually gets brighter. And it gets brighter because the the profile I'm using already actually reduces it. So as soon as I hit override, it's going to say, oh, well, let's set that to zero, which is brighter. But I'm actually going to take that a little bit darker, just a little bit. I'm also going to say that, you know, okay, while I'm here in the dark, I want to have a little less contrast just a little less contrast. I'm going to do uh, a little less saturation. There we go. Um, I could do some some color filtering if I really wanted to, uh, but I don't. So let's just turn that off. Um, and another thing, another effect I really like in here is I'm going to go to post processing. Now I am a fool for Bloom. I add Bloom to everything. Uh, I think Bloom is just one of those there, it blooms like onions. It just goes with everything. That's not a saying, but uh, I'm going to say it at any rate. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the threshold, increase the intensity, and I'm just going to give my level just a nice little little underwater enchanted glow. How about that uh, with this bloom? Another cool thing is so we're in here in the water. It's dark and stuff, and you know so that makes the, the areas that are light a little bit more intense. And I'm going to add some dirt texture to my camera so that we can see like little water droplets on our camera and stuff like that. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to hit my circle selector here. And there is a um, uh, texture in here already called Lens Dirt 02, and I'm going to override that intensity. I'm just going to start bringing this up till we see that that dirt on the camera there maybe it's a, maybe a little intense but I'm okay I, I like going overboard there so we can really see it and so there so while I'm in the cave it kind of looks like this that's that's kind of actually gonna bug me it's a really dirty lens but uh, there we go now the problem is that I've done this but now when I'm outside I've overridden my global profile and that is certainly not 
what I want to happen. And so what I need to do is on my volume, I'm gonna say you're not a global volume, you're a local volume. And that means that only while my camera is here inside this volume will this take effect. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna hit play. And I'm just gonna drive my boat over there as soon as it starts up. And it's not gonna be quite what I want yet. And we're gonna see what I mean by that. So I'm gonna just pilot my craft over here. And what we're gonna see is it's gonna just apply immediately. Pop. And that's that's not right, that's not what I want. And so I'm gonna look at the blend distance here and I'm just gonna increase this blend distance. I could even do something like, I don't know, like 20 or 19 or whatever. And what that's gonna do is it's going to make it so it blends in and out like that based on some distance from there. So I'm gonna go back in and we see it sort of fades in and there we go. And so I've just kind of created a neat little effect and maybe, you know, I could even maybe go a little darker with it. Maybe while I'm in here, what else could we do? We could add uh, some vignette, maybe. So if we uh, made it black and increase the intensity, and so maybe while we're in here, we vignette. I don't know. We're just coming up with just visual stylings on the fly. I'm not claiming they're any good. Um, there we go. Cool. So that allows us to really easily kind of change the, the feel, the emotion of our scene, the look and feel. It makes areas like this cave here feel kind of special. Um, so it's just a really kind of neat and easy way to, to, to add this stuff, which is pretty cool. So the last thing I want to talk about uh, is, is something a little a little special. I'm going to talk about some, some sequencing, some gameplay events with Timeline. To assist with this, um, you know, I, I decided to, to, to take a little bit of uh, advantage of this situation. I, as I had stated, I'm not generally a, an artist, I'm a programmer. And so what, uh, what I did is I was inspired, I decided to try my hand at being an artist. Uh, and so I have added uh, for us all a, a pirate ship. And I think as my debut uh, of being an artist, I think it did pretty good. Uh, I believe that is PBR, maybe not. But there we go, we have a pirate ship. Uh, I am now an artist. That is and amazing. And so I want to defend my, thank you very much. I want to defend myself uh, from this pirate ship. Uh, I don't even know I'm turning away. Obviously you all want to look at it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use timeline. And so I'm just going to come back here. Now timeline, a lot of times people oh, fly right into a mountain. A lot of times people think timeline is just for you know cinematics, right? Um, and if I actually, if I come up here, uh, and I look, there's this kind of timeline already set up uh, for an intro camera thing that's just actually part of this project. And if I turn that object on, I can see that here's timeline. And what they've done is they've used timeline in conjunction with Cinemachine to set up just sort of this opening. You can even see my, my cave effects are being applied now in there um, and to create this opening sequence, which is pretty cool. However, uh, everyone kind of knows you can use timeline for um, you know, c cinematics and sequences and stuff like that, I'm gonna show how we can do it for some gameplay effects. And so in order to open this timeline window, all I have to do is go to window, sequencing and timeline, and I've just docked it down here. And I am going to, again, in my scene view, just sort of look at my boat. Now, at the beginning of this talk, we saw Hussein uh, creating the prototype uh, of some water gun. And uh, at this point, I think it's about ready to use. And so down here, I've got this, this prefab for guns, and I'm just gonna drag this in here. Let's see how those turned out. And uh, those turned out uh, pretty good. So those are the uh, end result of those, those water cannons there. And uh, so we are ready to rock and roll with these. And what's on these? So we basically have, um, we have just some, some models that have a, a particle effect that we're gonna wanna play. And as part of the gameplay part of this, there's a, a controller on here that if I press tab, uh, then these will, will animate on. And then uh, if I press tab again, they'll fire. And that's gonna be kind of a, a crux of this mechanic is, is setting up that, that timing of that, that sequence in order to make it do something. And so I'm gonna take these guns, I'm just gonna drop them right on uh, my whole root of my boat there. And I am just going to uh, reset the transform of it. So they're now just sort of slung on the bottom of this boat. That's not gonna matter. We're gonna have a cool way to make this work. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new timeline. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna go to create and I'm going to find timeline, which I'll just call this, oh, my caps lock was on, gun timeline. How about that? And then I'm gonna select my guns and I'm just gonna drop this timeline right on there. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to add this thing called a playable director. And the playable director is the thing responsible for playing this timeline. Now, I don't want this to play right when it starts, so I'm going to uncheck play on awake. And now all I need to do is set up this timeline. So back in my timeline window, I can click my little down arrow here to select my gun timeline, and I like to just lock that. And so now I can begin sequencing. So I do know that I want to do some animation for these guns. So I'm just going to drop my left gun on here and say, you know what, create an animation track for me. And my right gun, animation track. And now I can begin animating them. Now, with my left gun selected, I could try to key, create keyframes and do all this stuff in here. Uh, but a really easy thing to do is actually just to put myself in record mode. Now, while I'm in record mode, anything that I do to this object will be recorded as part of this sequence uh, of this animation. And so to start, I'm going to just go to where it has its rotation and I'm going to right click and say add key. Now that's going to add a key right here that's going to record that initial value of 25 or 385, depending on how you're looking at it there. And then I'm going to move this to, say, frame 60, somewhere in there. I can be exact with it. There we go. And I'm simply going to grab my rotate tool and I'm going to rotate this up somewhere right around, uh, uh, right around there. There we go. And then I'm just going to leave record mode. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for my right gun. I'm just going to put myself in record mode. Again, I'm going to move my scrubber to the beginning. I'm going to capture that initial rotation about the z-axis. And then I'm going to move my scrubber. And I'm just going to rotate this up like so. There we go. And so now we have this animation. And if I'm, if I'm looking at this boat here, uh, that we can see that it's going to go like that. All right, like I said, I'm, I'm not an artist, nor am I an animator, but I think that looks uh, good enough for me. So there we go. Uh, I could spend more time, but I think we get the idea. And so the next thing I want to do, right, is I need to say, all right, when can I fire this gun, these cannons, right? Because if I just say I could fire whenever, we'd start shooting even while these were like over here. I need to make sure uh, that it's not until the appropriate time that they can actually fire, that I trigger some event, I tell some code that it's okay to fire. Uh, I, I know that in the code for this, um, there is a method that they said, hey, when it's time for the, the guns to be able to fire, you know, trigger this method um, using using timeline, using a signal. Um, I could try to set up all this timing stuff in code, but you know, what if it changes? What if I make this animation take longer or shorter? Do I have to go and change all those numbers? I don't wanna do any of that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add something called a marker. And so I'm going to move my scrubber here to the point where the guns are in their upward position. And I'm just going to hit right here to, uh, to, to show the, uh, the, the markers there. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to add something called a signal emitter. And so a signal emitter there is going to just send out a signal to anything that, that cares, anything that wants to listen. What is this signal? right? And I have a few things here in the inspector I want to set up. So first off, I need a signal to emit, right? And I can determine like, you know, what frame I emitted on. It probably should be 60, but that's fine. Retroactive, only emit once, things like that. Uh, so what am I gonna em emit? And so you can see I already have uh, a signal in here. Um, so I'm gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna create a signal. It's gonna say, where do you wanna save this? I'll just save it in my artist tools demo. And you know what, just for the sake of you not listening to my loud keyboard, I'm gonna leave this as a new signal, though ideally I'd give this a, a name that made sense. And so there's my new signal. It's also gonna say, hey, so you have a signal, but you know this, this director has no receivers. You know, something's gotta receive this signal. So I'm gonna click add signal receiver. And once I do that, it shows me this, this guns uh, game object. And it sh says, here's everything that guns game object can do. What do you want to do when we hit this, this marker, this signal. And so I'm just gonna say, you know what? Let's go to the gun controller script. And unfortunately, based on how I'm recording my screen, it's cut off, but uh, you would be seeing a list of all of the methods uh, of my gun controller. Can I, no, I can't get that on my screen. I apologize for that. Uh, but there's a list of all the methods in my gun controller. Let's see, can I, if I click over here? Nope. Sorry. So anyway, there is a method called guns ready. And when I click it, it is going to select guns ready. There we go. And so now it says that, hey, as my animation's playing, when we hit that marker, tell that script, hey, script, the guns are ready. And that script is going to say, cool, the next time you press this button, it's going to fire. And then, you know, the script is going to just play my effect and, and hopefully defeat some pirates. Uh, so let's try it out. I'm going to hit play. 
and we're going to see that the guns are still on the underside because I didn't check play on awake the animation's not playing and so if I hit tab all right, our guns are armed and ready. Now, I'm not a big fan of a fair fight, so I also rigged up the shader that uh, Hussein made so that we have stealth gun action over here um, so that I could just sort of sneak up and uh, say, hey, pirates, not cool, brah, and, and knock them over with some water. So, again, my amazing artistic talent, then I fade back in, and uh, we all say, yay, and we all go drink some root beer. But anyway... Uh, we have saved our lives. The pirates are no longer a risk, uh, and we were able to defeat them with the the power of artist tools. What do you think, Hussein? Awesome, dude! Your pirate ship just like knocked everything out of the water. Even though yeah, but it was, was good. It was a good pirate ship, though, right? That was awesome. I we're gonna have to commission you for some paintings. That's that was my goal. Okay, so that is gonna wrap up our demo. So just a, a quick recap, Hussein. What what did you show? Well, I showed you how to use Pro Builder to do some modeling within um, uh, Unity. And then I showed you uh, FBX Exporter to be able to take whatever you have within Unity to a uh, external digital content creation toolkit and then back and forth and retain all your connections. Then we showed how to use the Node Graph um, Editor for our shaders, and uh, which is Shader Graph, of course. And yeah, and that was it on my part. Cool. And then uh, I just showed you how to create a simple camera system or a complex camera system if you really want using Cinemachine to do a lot of really neat stuff there. We made our cave look, you know, kind of dark and scary and cool looking with some post-processing. And then finally, we, we beat the tar out of some pirates. Um, you know, not really. It's, this is not a violent thing. It's, you know, kids appropriate. We, we shot some water at some pirates uh, using timeline for gameplay, um, you know, mechanics there. So before we wrap up here, you know, if, if this stuff was interesting, you know, for the to, to continue learning, uh, we do have a, a learn platform. You can just find it at learn.unity.com. And going on right now, uh, we are offering, uh, you know, free access to learn premium. So if, you know, you want to learn more about any of the tools, any of the features that we showed you, um, that is a great place to check it out. And uh, now is a great time to do so. Uh, but anyway, that is the, the talk, uh, Artist Tools in Unity here. Thank you all so very much for your time, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.